from where should I start? How can I tell you our story? You have seen so many videos about this epic place, so much hype. Why would you care about the real life here? Again, at least I can introduce you to the guys in this place that some of the most important people in recent motorsport history have enjoyed a cold beer and a hot meal. We, aspiring nobodies, sitting in our favorite table. Andrea, the ninja mechanic. His motto, if it doesn't work, fix it with a hammer. Gab, the hot shot race driver. Sometimes cocky, sometimes cool, always fast. That guy. I'm not really sure who that guy is, and me, well, you're not here to listen to me speak about myself. Like all big and stupid decisions in our lives, everything starts with a toast. By day, we're working the most epic track in the world, with some of the coolest cars you can imagine. By night, the real ring life starts. When everyone else is sleeping, we work as hard as we can in our seat boxes. You might all think that going on the ride with our cars is no big thing. You might think it's an e you might think it's easy. And you are excused because I also thought that. I thought I could come here and in two laps go under eight, no problem. How hard can it be? You normally go in small tracks and with the Lotus you are three, four, five seconds faster than a Megane, for example. And Megans are, are lapping very fast here. Unfortunately, it's not like that. This track really needs power. And with our cars, I have 140 horsepower, Costa has 200, and Andrea has probably 160. Uh, judging by the speed of his car. <laughs> no, 240, let's say. But still, with that kind of horsepower, it's very, very tricky. You have to go very fast in the corners because this track really, really needs power. This is why we are trying so hard. This is why, if we do it, it would be a big achievement for us. I don't really think that the other two guys with their tricked out GDM sheet boxes will be able to do that, but I will. <laughs> I've bought my loved Lotus Elise S1 in 2006 after a long research because I wanted a very specific model. I wanted to be one of the early models because they had uh, aluminum hubs uh, and uh, a few different things. And also I wanted an S1 because it didn't have any electronic heads. It's a stripped out pure track car. I also wanted it in white because they only sold three in Italy. So the goal was to buy it and keep it for life, almost as a collector. Just drive it in weekends uh, without uh, ruining the car in any way, without uh, tricking it out to be a track car any more than it was already. Uh, eventually we had to do a service and during this service uh, the workshop fucked up massively. There was a huge bill and the car ran crap, it was much worse than before. From then on uh, I decided that I would never enter a workshop anymore. At the same time, I decided that while I was at it, I would enter some track events. Just, uh, just to get the feel for it, just to take it on the track. It snowballed very quickly from there. Uh, it went from uh, I will put different pads to spending three grand in uh, track suspension and another four grand in magnesium wheels. Which benefit is uh, hardly measurable, but for me, it made sense at that point. I came here to work at the Nürburgring and I took the car with me because, uh, I mean, driving a Lotus, your Lotus uh, in the, on the Nürburgring, it's, you know, you have to do it. Uh, so I came and I did two laps because uh, the car broke down on its second lap because I forgot to put oil in the engine, which wasn't a very smart idea. So, yeah, that's uh, the story of my Lotus Elise. And uh, now it's back, I will finish to run in the engine, I will go under eight. the 
1999, I remember like it was yesterday. I was at school and I was reading one of the most famous Italian tuning magazine, it was Elaborare, and they were making a review about this Honda 2000. I saw this car there on the page, silver with red interior. I read what was about the car, the engine and all the VTEC system, the, the essence of the car, and I said, fuck, I want one of these. It happened that exactly 10 years later, I went to see this used as 2000 and it was exactly like that. It was silver, red interior and was immaculate. And so I got the car. like the most was the fucking awesome sound of the engine screaming and going at 9000 rpm that is, is, is not common for a road car. Driving the car stock of course uh, uh, was not enough or better it's not it was not enough but you know you work with cars you always touch cars and did stuff also with uh, uh, cars that are not yours, with friends' cars and stuff like that, so I started to modify the car in a, let's say, common and cheap way, so you do the exhaust, you do suspension, you put an air filter, and then you go with the clutch and the flywheel, but I have to say that now that I'm driving the car here on the Rorschleife, I think I was better to go for some better quality part than what I have now. When I came to work at the Nürburgring, uh, the car that struck me the most when I saw it the first time was certainly Costa's uh, MX-5. I didn't know much about the car, but the only thing I knew was that MX-5s are for hairdressers and uh, are extremely slow on track. And normally MX-5 drivers think they are very fast only because they are driving very slow cars. So they assume that they will be able to do the same in a fast car, which is completely untrue. Costas tried to change the, the hairdresser appearance by completely ruining and destroying his car deliberately. So it looks like, literally, the car looks like it has been at, at the bottom of a lake for six months and then recovered. But apparently uh, I was told that it was very fast and I should have been uh, careful with what I was saying because uh, Costas was a fast driver and the car were fa was fast. Both statements turned out to be untrue as well. Costas is not very fast and the car is reasonably fast. But it's still an MX-5, so not very good for the track. Costas is my closest friend here. We live together since, uh, let's say, I think it's two years. Um, he's a very strange character. The car is a very passionate project. You see that uh, it's invested a lot of time, a lot of effort under the mechanical part because static part is... The engine is, is very strong and it's pulling. The, the car started with a very short gear ratio and now he wanted to change it and I, I understand also this, this will of uh, adapting the car to the track. The only thing that I don't understand is how the fuck the car gets broken because every time that he goes out he comes to me and says we have a problem, we have this, we have that, and when you tell him, look, I see that here something is coming, you have to fix it before it's too late, the answer is always, yeah, I will do it, I will do it, don't worry, we will do it when it's gonna be the time, and every fucking time the car has some problem, and he ends up saying that he doesn't drive enough, and this and that, blah, 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 Still, uh, I'm sorry Costas, but uh, for the moment I'm still faster than you with a slower car, with a much slower car. You've seen our cars and this is where we stand. We have a full season to try and go under 8. 
We will not be happy until all three cars will go under eight. If you want to see where we are coming from, this is our baseline time. You can check the video in the link below. If you have a Lotus, or an MX-5, or an S2000, which is the best, root for the car you like the most. Leave a comment below, share it with your friends, keep involved. We are risking everything we have. We are risking our money, our cars, and potentially our lives, just to go after a stupid goal we set ourselves. Just, to, just for a lap time. Whatever you do, just stay with us for the ride. It's not that I'm not a fast driver, it's the car because I had the problem with the turbo manifold and I actually, in this lap, in this lap that you were seeing, 